Hey what is up guys and welcome back to Predatory Exotics. Today we're going to be making the ultimate realistic Cape African house snake enclosure so stick around to see how we built this awesome enclosure. So we have got our Exoterra 90 long, 45 centimeter wide and 45 centimeter tall tank in front of us here. Um, as you can see, we already have a piece of the background cut out, um, but the first stage is obviously clean the tank. So you've got a nice clean surface to start with. Um, and then you're gonna be starting with the polystyrene. Um, so we have a thick, dense insulation polystyrene. So it bears a little bit of weight, which is good. Um, also means carving it, not too many of the balls come off and it's not too much of a faff. Um, so we've got this bit cut out, so we've got to cut out the side bits and that middle partition as well. Um, so the first step, we've got to cut it all out, glue it all in, and then we have to leave it probably about 24 hours to cure, and then we can start doing the grouting process. So now I am cutting out the side panels, as you can see here. I um, already had that big panel cut out, but we've got to cut out the side panels. One side is going to be on the African mud hut side. One side is going to be the rock side. Um, so they are going to be different, but at this point we're just cutting out to get the basic shape. So now that all the panels are cut out, uh, just check and see that they fit here, because um, you don't want to start cutting bits out and gluing stuff when it doesn't fit um, and also just wanted to make sure the right ones were sort of in the right place um, and that it matches up along the edge um, we can adjust little bits um, and then go from there now the window uh, just want to see how big I need it uh, don't make it too small and it feels like it's two separate tanks want to make the window large enough that it um, the snake can easily move in and out of each side and you can see through to each side as well. Um, don't want to divide this into two tanks, want to make it still feel like one tank um, and I can adjust it as I do it. So hopefully this is the right size. Uh, we'll cut it out and see how it goes. What's your plan for the inside of the window? Like, you know, the actual like part in between. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, are you going to smooth it off or are you going to keep leave it as like a uh... sharp rectangle, like sharp square? I think leave it maybe as flat as possible so that the snake, if I put a log through it, okay, the snake yeah. can sort of lay along it. And if it happened to, if it like coiled up on the windowsill, I think that'd be such a cool. We get some good Instagram shots. Yeah. Nice. What's your plan for the front part of that window? Like the part that's facing us right now? Because oh, of course yeah. the sides you can carve off. Yeah, so gonna round this out so it's more of a because it looks a bit ugly at the moment so yeah. we actually round it off we change the attachment from this to this this is the other attachment the semicircle one i mentioned earlier um which has got the white you might not even see it because it's such a thin wire um this is what i use for carving all the stuff out um so if we like round off the edge of this so it almost curves also need to on the top here do a slight angle because we're going to add almost like a, a straw roof to it as well so if we finish off this panel and see what it looks like So now we've got that angle so we can do that uh, straw roof along the top of it. Um, we can just smooth out a little bit um, just so it's, we're probably going to hot glue gun it on. Um, so we want semi flat sort of surface. So if we get rid of any of these sort of excess bits, again, doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to do the grout first. So we can either level it out with the grout, or even if it's a little bit wavy, I'm not too worried. It's supposed to be rustic. I've never built a th straw roof, but I imagine it won't be perfect. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so let's go for that. That's that's to my eye, that's as good as we're gonna get it. Oh, and we got to round out the door, round out the edge as well. That's right, looks a little bit more natural, no sharp edges. Um, yeah, looks pretty good. Looks like sort of rock bit. Obviously it's not as natural as it can be in terms of 
the house would have a fourth wall. Um, but this is, I think, a good little addition, and I like it. It's a lot of like trial and error, yeah. sort of thing. Because you see all them YouTubers that like do it perfect, yeah, they just do it perfectly every time, yeah. and so like you, then you try it and you're like, damn, this didn't turn out how I wanted it to be. But yeah, that sort of thing, like yeah, because we we real, we real out here, we you know. <laughs> So we're going to start, uh, probably change our mind, might carve out this edge. We've never done anything like this before, so if you're doing it at home, don't be discouraged if um, it doesn't turn out perfect first time. Can't we do anything perfect first time? So we're just going to see if we can carve out the edge of this window, because it does look a little bit harsh in the middle of the tank. Um, so that looks a bit better. We're going to do more of this corner so i actually forgot um it's way easier to carve out the edges because it's su in such a crevice between the door um, it's easier to carve this out before you stick it in um, the rest of the carving around the back will do that after but if we do all these edges that we can see um, it's going to be a bit better Uh, so as you can see now, I am applying the glue. Um, we're using no more nails, um, which is okay for polystyrene. Um, I haven't found anything better to use. Um, I'm putting it on quite thick. <laughs> um, uh, but it is quite good stuff. It seems to have hold all our previous builds. This is like the fourth build we've done now. Um, it seems to work out fine. Um, but we need to glue this to the back wall and then the side panels as well um, just so that it doesn't come off because you don't want it coming down and ruining all your hard work. So essentially does this mean that once you stick this on it's like a permanent fixture? How easy is it to get uh, off if you wanted to change the tank? I do not know. Um, okay. I can imagine it might be quite difficult um, but there's not glue over the whole thing so it may be somewhat easy to get off not too sure um it's not like it's super glue or some sort of like epoxy stuff um just something to keep in mind yeah, when you're doing it though yeah if you maybe if you aren't super maybe it's your first one or something you're not super sure you're gonna like it maybe do a semi-permanent version of this um but we're probably not going to change this tank and this is going to be this animal's tank for the rest of its life so um, we want to make sure it's right and it's not going to be moved for the next, basically until the, the snake will probably outlive this tank because the polystyrene probably won't last forever. Um, and uh, I would have thought this will be a good home for it, I hope. Um, so you don't need to cover the whole background. Um, you just need enough so that it sort of um, has enough places over the whole thing. And maybe don't do the edges as well. Um, you can see I've left a gap because as you push it in, it's gonna spread out as well. So we've stuck in the three sides. It's now time to stick in this middle panel. Um, just one thing to note when you are sticking these in, try and push it from both sides and you can actually see where the sort of um, no more nail stuff is sticking and pressing in. Um, and don't worry too much if you don't get all of the cracks lined up as much because you're just gonna fill it with grout. Um, if you are doing it with an animal that has feed insects, uh, make sure you definitely fill in those cracks as best as possible so the insects can't get behind because once they get behind you're not getting them back out again. Um, so we're going to stick this on now. Um, got to put a small bit on here to stick it to the back um, and then we're going to use some cocktail sticks um, for added support and to keep it in place. So now we've done this, it's actually very secure. You can see, obviously this bit's the wobbliest, but here it's very secure because we put um, two two rows of the stuff, this is smoking, um, put two layers of the stuff in and then from both sides, we put the um, cocktail sticks in um, for added support and it seems to have worked out really well. Um, so the only thing left to do in the sort of structural stages is to do some sort of rock work. Um, so we're going to start doing some rock work that we can add some rock shelves around this outdoor area of the mud hut. Um, and then we're still deciding whether we should put
put maybe shelving in there or not because we do have quite a lot of decor to go on the inside section um, so we'll just see what it goes um, and we'll just carve some little random shelves to put in there so we have carved out our um, little shelving units put in a load of little cocktail toothpick type things um, and now we're going to stick it in so kind of just do a very poor job of this <laughs> um, stick some of the no more nails over the base or on the cocktail sticks um, just so that when it goes into the foam on the other side it sort of glues in So we're back, it is 24 hours later. It's given enough time for the glue to dry throughout the whole build. Also added in some extra cocktail sticks on some of the ledges as well, because we ran out in the previous section. Um, it's now time to start carving. So we're gonna do this left-hand side is gonna be more rocky. So it's gonna be a bit irregular and make sort of rock formations. And then this side is gonna be mostly plain because it's gonna be the walls of our mud hut. Uh, but we're gonna add some sort of shelf indentation type things. Never done that sort of technique before. Um, so you have to see how it goes and hopefully it turns out all right. But for now, let's get into the carving. So we are now moving on to the grout stage. Uh, obviously we're gonna do two different colors, um, but the first two layers we can do it all the same one, and then that third one we can do this side. Put in some acrylic darker paint, and then do the mud hut side on the right. Uh, we have this acrylic, uh, this uh, grout here, which is from B&Q. Um, this is the flexible wall and floor grout. Um, there is an anti-mold one that you might be tempted to get, but the anti-mold one has some chemicals in it that aren't good for your reptiles. So try and get this one if you can. Um, I'm sure there's other grouts that are suitable. Um, and obviously, if you're in the US or other countries, you probably don't have B&Q, so Home Depot or whatever you have there. So we're gonna do this. Um, the first coat is the easiest because you can see where you're doing because it's all white and then it will turn a different color. Um, and also the um, thickness isn't too bad. You can put it on however you want because it's the final one. Doesn't have to have any, don't have to worry about brush marks, stuff like that. And as long as you get in all the cracks um, filling all that it's probably easiest on the first coat if you get a knife and just wedge it in all the cracks um, but let's get ahead and get into the grout so I don't know if you can see here this is the consistency we're going for uh, I originally put so much water in it was so sloppy but you want it so it's like slightly falling off but you can easily sort of paste it onto the walls and it will stick you can see it's sticking to the knife but it's is somewhat pliable and um, so this consistency is about right um, you might need a little bit thicker as you plug in some of the holes if you have any um, but this should be right and let's give it a go So that is the first layer of grout done. It does take a while, but it's important to get as much of it done as possible. It doesn't need to be perfect because we are going to do three layers. Um, we did fill in all the cracks down the side and along the top as well. Um, it does look quite dark now, um, but it does lighten up a lot once it dries. Um, probably can't tell till going on to the final layers how it's going to look. And then on that final layer, we'll add some paint because we want it to be this sort of color once it's dry, but you'll notice maybe in the next clip after 24 hours, it's not be fully dry, but it will, you'll see it is a lot lighter. Um, so let's go ahead and skip it to the next bit. So it is now 48 hours later. You can see the difference in color, how light it is compared to how it was when I first put it on. Um, you can probably tell now why we want to darken this side compared to the normal rock side. So the next stage is quite boring. We just got to do the exact same thing again because we're going to be worry about color on the third stage. Um, so let's just get into it and do another coat. Yeah, 
So hopefully you can tell the difference now. Uh, done this half with the second layer of grout, and you can tell the color difference, how light this is compared to this one. But we're hoping that we can replicate this once it's dry, and hopefully this mud hut section stays this dark color once we've added the pigmentation on the third coat. Um, and you can also tell as well how much of the detail goes once you add on this second layer. The more layers you add, the less detail you get. Um, so you can see where this rock is looking less rocky. So remember when you're carving, just try and do it as deep as possible. It might look almost like you've exaggerated it too much, but uh, hopefully it does work out okay for you because that grout does fill in a lot of the gaps um, and also depends how thick you're doing the grout. This is quite a thick layer of grout. We might um, loosen it up for this next bit um, just so we can keep as much detail as possible in the rock work. But let's go on to it and finish this second layer. So that is layer number two done. We've got to wait another 48 hours again to do the third coat where we'll do that other coloration on it. Uh, it does take a long while to do this process, but definitely worth it because you end up with a really robust and secure background that looks good as well. So I'll see you in another 48 hours. So it is now time to do the last layer of the tank. As you can see now, it is very sturdy. All of it is looking good. Um, the grout is thick enough now, but the third layer is more about the texture. I'm gonna try and get rid of the brush marks and more dab on the grout. It doesn't have to be that thick, um, just so we get a more rough texture and looks a bit more natural. And then we're gonna do the other side with our acrylic paint here. Um, we've got this uh, burnt umber acrylic paint, which we think is the perfect sort of mud coloration for the mud hut side. We don't have a lot of grout left, so we might not mix this in. This is completely safe. Um, it's got no solvents, anything like that. So we may end up just painting on, but we'll roll the time lapse and see what we do. So this is how it turned out, uh, but not after a few attempts, as you can see in the picture right now. You can see in the picture right now. Uh, I think we forgot the picture. Um, it wasn't that different. Um, this is what the finished product was after we did that third layer of grout with the paint in. Um, for some reason, it took all of the color out completely. Um, so we knew we had to redo it because there wasn't enough contrast between the two sides. So we then painted on this exact same color, but straight onto it with the acrylic paint. Um, and it's turned out even darker than it is in the tube. So no idea what's going on there. Um, so pick a color you want. It might take a couple of tries, um, but this is a little bit dark, but we think we can make it work once it's got the LED light over the top, it's gonna to brighten up a lot. And it also means that it's a very good contrast. And the bedding on this side is gonna be a light uh, Lignocell bedding. So it's gonna work really well, hopefully. Um, so let's get into it and start doing some building. Uh, first job is to install the heat mat because I wanna put it on the bottom of the tank and once it's full, that's gonna be a bit difficult. So install the heat mat and then we'll start doing our decoration. Oh, no, I fully like glued my finger. So that is the plant that has been glued in nice and secure in the sort of main position. So it should vaguely stay. The snake can still move around it and hide behind it in this corner, which is a nice little hide. Um, but we're going to be adding in the substrate on this side of the enclosure. It's going to be like a coconut reptile substrate, um, just because this is supposed to simulate the sort of outside section. Um, so we're going to put this in here. Never used this before, but um, should hopefully be able to spray this down and keep the outside section a little bit higher humidity. And then for climbing to sort of fill this dead space, I'm going to use this Exoterra vine. So if we kind of wedge it in here, sort of looks like the vine is coming out. Out, and then we can hide it like that. Nice looking like that is growing on the vine. Just gives the snake more climbing opportunity. Um, it may well, may well move this around, but it seems like it's good in the middle of the tank, nice little feature. Um, and then we're gonna add some hides. 
So we're going to add in the hides from the original tank. Um, hopefully adds a little bit of comfortable smell so it feels a bit more at home. Um, this is going to be the humid hide. We're going to hide this in, luckily they're quite naturalistic rock style. Um, so we're going to put that in that corner, which is quite nice. And then we have this other rock hide as well. That's going to go in here nicely in the corner. And then we're going to throw in this skull. Not a massive fan of this skull actually, but the snake seems to really like it. Um, so we're going to hide that in that corner just there like that. Um, so that side is now pretty much done, the naturalistic side. Got our rock hides, got our hiding spaces, climbing spots. So let's flip it over and do the sort of human habitat bit. So it is time to move on to our mud hut section. So the first bit before we put any substrate in is going to be the fire pit that goes in the corner. Um, we want to put this without any substrate, um, mostly because we want to possibly put a different substrate in the fire pit to make it look a bit more fire pit like. Um, but also it's going to be more secure if we put it straight onto the glass here. Um, so might speed this up because it might take me a while to get the right fig configuration of all the different rocks. Um, so let's whiz through it and see what we end up with. So I think that's what we are going to go for for the rock um, formation. Just got to check that uh, we have this little pot that's going to go inside which is going to be this little terracotta traditional African pot style thing. It's going to go in this corner, so I guess that fits in very nicely. Um, so now we'll add the substrate um, and we'll start putting a few more decorations and then we'll do the feature little cauldron above it as well. So that is what it looks like with the pot and the brush. Uh, this is literally a black baking tray we literally just got off of uh, Amazon for five quid. So we're going to cut it and put it over the fire pit section and hopefully there's some gaps enough in between that the snake can use it as a hide as well. So let's get cut in and see if it fits. So we forgot to leave a little hole for the snake to get in. So we've moved a hole there. Also, we didn't realize that the grill wouldn't stay up, so we've put a little column in the corner as well. Uh, you noticed we have clipped the metal and then put glue on the edge. Um, obviously, that's not very pretty, so we're going to do like a top layer around the fire pit. So that's going to sit on like that. We've got the room for the snake to get inside, and then this is going to be our sort of cap layer across the top here. So we are trying to build the contraption that holds the cauldron above the fire pit section. Um, we've got our support beam here and then we've got a like hook eye, screw eye, I don't know what it's called. Um, we've got to screw that through the mesh into there because uh, we don't want the weight of the cauldron because it is quite heavy on there. So we need to, some support as it hangs down. Just got to get it in the right place as we hang it through the mesh. So that is this side done. All we need is a water bowl, but the water bowl uh, is the same one from its current enclosure, but hopefully get a terracotta one that's gonna match this one. Won't do that until we move it, but the only thing left to do inside the tank now is the roof. Um, so in this middle bit, we are gonna put a small straw type roof, uh, which is actually a sushi mat that we're gonna cut up. Um, hopefully it works. We're gonna put it on that middle bit and it's gonna have an overhang. So let's cut that up and stick it on now. So that is the roof on. Uh, I think the sushi mat actually does the job, to be honest. Uh, obviously we didn't record it because it took a few of us to actually hold on the mat and, and then roll it out um, and then hot glue it onto place as well. Um, but it all lines up pretty nicely with the matting. Um, obviously you won't see much of it because the roof will actually be on, um, but hopefully it adds a nice sort of shading element because the UV will be over top and you'll get sort of a shadow effect. Hopefully it'll be quite nice. So the next step is to get it down to where it's supposed to be. We can add the lighting um, and then wire it all into place.
So that is the final product. I hope everyone has enjoyed watching this tutorial on how to make the ultimate realistic Cape African house snake enclosure. Um, I think it's turned out really good with the two sides. Uh, looks awesome, really contrasting in colors and hopefully the snake uses it as much as we hope. So if you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment down below things we could improve on because it probably isn't perfect. There probably will be things that we add in the future. Um, additional lighting, sort of uh, lighting with the moonlight, maybe do some lighting with the fire pit, which could be a cool accessory. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to find out more builds we do in the future. And the upcoming videos are gonna be awesome, so you better stick around for those. So have a good day, and I hope you enjoyed the video.